2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 19. The Bible reads, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are... You know what? God knows who are His. God knows who's saved and who isn't. You may not always know who is and isn't. Now look, and, and I'm just going to be completely honest. If you're looking at a person and you're looking at their life, there may be an indicator that a person is not saved, but the only reason that it's going to influence us is to say, like, okay, well, let's preach them the gospel then. Right? You might look at a person's life and think, like, well, I mean, they're just living like the world. It's not like it's the worst thing to think that maybe this person isn't saved because you're looking at their life. But that's different than teaching that, nope, there's absolutely no way that person could be saved because of their life. Those are two different things. Because now you're, you're teaching people that, well, I have to have some works then. And then the problem is, well, how much work is enough work? That's right. And they're never going to give you a straight answer on that either. Yeah. Well, how much work? I mean, if I have a desire, is that good enough? And, and you know what? You're going to find people all along the spectrum. Well, yeah, desire is good enough. Well, what about, you know, one work? What about, I mean, I swept the, the, the church building one time after church. Does that count as a work? I mean, what? Where do you draw the line? Do I have to do more good works than bad works? I mean, that's starting to sound like Islam. The Lord knoweth them that are his, verse 19, second half, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So should we be departing from iniquity? Of course. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. This is what God commands and wants and tells us to do. But do we always do what he tells us to do? No. The Lordship Salvation crowd would say, yeah. And it's a lie. But look at verse 20. It says, but, it says, let everyone in the name of the name of Christ depart from iniquity, but in a great house. Does God have a great house? Yeah, it's big, right? Now we know that in general, there's, there's few that be saved. But just think about how many people throughout all of time have gotten saved. That's still a lot of people. I mean, even if it's a minority of people that are, that are ever existing on the world at any one given time, over the course of 6,000 years, that's a lot of people. There's been a lot of people that have been saved. There's a lot of babies that have been murdered. There's a lot, you know, there, there's a lot of people that are going to be, God's got a great house. Okay, it's a, it's a great house. But look what it says. But in a great house, there are not only, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. Lordship Salvation God is saying, nope, it's just gold and silver. Nope, you just have people that just all do good works, that are all glorifying to God. You will keep his commandments. You will do what's right if you're truly saved. If you truly have saved. That's not what the Bible says. Because in a great house, in a big house, this is a, you know what? God's house is in heaven. This is talking about all the people who are going to be saved. It's not talking about a house in hell. This is a great house. God's house. There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. And some to honor and some to dishonor. There are some believers, there are some people who are saved that do bring dishonor, unfortunately, to the name of Christ. But they're still part of that great house. And that's what the Bible teaches.